Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is NopeNapNarp, and today, we're looking at a game that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Ever since I first heard about Celeste in January, I knew it was a game that I had to play, and one that I had to talk about on the channel. But I didn't want to rush it, because the Psychology of Gaming series was still very new in January, and I needed to feel it out more before tackling a game of this magnitude. The reason for that is because Celeste deals with issues of anxiety and depression, the two most common mental health issues affecting millions upon millions of people around the world. So because of how severe these conditions can be, and how common they really are, I wanted to approach this episode carefully and respectfully. So today, in this episode of Psychology of Gaming, we're talking about Celeste its portrayal of anxiety and depression, and the lessons we can learn from it to ease a troubled mind. So before we look at Celeste, let's start by defining what constitutes both anxiety and depression as they are defined in the psychological community. It's imperative that we do this first because we can't just assume that everyone who gets nervous sometimes has an anxiety disorder or that anyone who gets sad from time to time has a depression disorder. It's also important that we be specific when we're talking about these disorders, as the words anxiety and depression get thrown around a ton in our society today, but really, those two words alone aren't specific enough terms to diagnose and help a patient. So with that, let's start at the beginning. A person who spends their lives studying these conditions within the psychological field is known as an abnormal psychologist, which you may have guessed from the word abnormal is the study of unusual thoughts and behaviors that normally manifest as mental illnesses. Abnormal psychologists study many different types of disorders, but they group mental illnesses into six unique categories. Those six categories are anxiety disorders, mood disorders, eating disorders, personality disorders, psychotic disorders, and addiction disorders. Each of these categories is home to many different types of disorders. For example, you've probably heard of bulimia, anorexia, and binge eating, and all of these are their own unique illnesses that affect a person differently, but when we're talking about them in terms of a category in psychology, they're all a part of the eating disorders category. These categories are very useful in helping to organize different disorders so that we can compare similarities between them. So hopefully that explanation makes sense. So, keeping those six categories in mind, when we say a person has anxiety issues, we are most likely talking about what is called Generalized Anxiety Disorder, or GAD for short, which is a member of the Anxiety Disorders category of mental illness, and it comes up alongside other conditions that you may have heard of, such as Obsessive Compulsive Disorder or PTSD. Both of those also fit into the anxiety category of mental illness. But what we're focusing on here is Generalized Anxiety Disorder, which is the most common of all of these anxiety disorders. The term depression, on the other hand, is most often used to describe one of two mental illnesses that fall under the mood disorders category of mental illness. Of course, depressive issues fall under the mood disorders category because the thing they do more than anything is affect your mood, making you more sad. So the first of these two illnesses would be major depressive disorder, and the second is called persistent depressive disorder. Major depressive disorder is a condition in which a person episodically experiences severe bouts with feelings of sadness, worthlessness, and emptiness. These feelings may affect the person severely, but they aren't experienced all the time. They come in episodes. On the other hand, persistent depressive disorder is more of a continuous bout with depression. You're constantly experiencing it, but the symptoms and the feelings are much more mild than they are severe. But like I said, they can last for months and years at a time. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, an estimated 6.8 million Americans live with generalized anxiety disorder, 16.1 million with major depressive disorder, 
and 3.3 million with persistent depressive disorder. That means that about 13% of Americans are living with one of these conditions, which may not sound like a lot, but again, we are talking about millions and millions of people in only one country, and we aren't even factoring in other illnesses in the anxiety and mood disorders categories. Finally, one last stat I want to throw at you would be this. About 50% of the people that are diagnosed with an anxiety disorder are also living with some sort of depression disorder. Now that we have a clearer picture of what we mean when we say anxiety and depression, let's take a look at how Celeste portrays the symptoms and mindsets associated with these conditions and the positive message it hopes to share with its players about these issues. The game opens by introducing us to Madeline, a young woman who is determined to climb Celeste Mountain, a mystic landmass with peculiar powers while she's on a journey of self-discovery. Madeline comments that she is nervous, but not really sure why, and this is already displaying a symptom of anxiety, that being a pervasive sense of nervousness, even in the face of nothing that's that threatening. Madeline is soon warned by a local hermit that Celeste Mountain holds incredible power that our young hero may not be ready to deal with. Madeline is somewhat irritated by the woman's comments, and it's a personality trait that we will see from her throughout the game. A sense of irritability is also a symptom associated with depression disorders. As we walk away from the lady, the sounds of her mocking laugh follow us, and I find this to be a small but very powerful detail. It's a representation of how the words of others can stick with us even after the moment has passed. So as we reach the end of the prologue, we are greeted with the message, you can do this. This quote serves as both a reflection on Madeline's perspective and also an inspirational commentary on the player's ability to overcome the gameplay challenges that will be offered. I should mention now that uh, this game is quite difficult, especially in its last few chapters, but I think this is necessary. If the game was a cakewalk, it would very much be a disservice to those living with anxiety and depression disorders. The difficult challenge of the game is linked to the difficulty of living with these conditions, and if the game was easy, it would make it seem like these conditions aren't as impactful as they truly are. Oh, I should probably also give a spoiler warning. I might be a little late, but you know what? It's just the prologue, so you haven't heard too much. If you want to play this game, I highly recommend you go do it now, then watch the rest of this video because I'm going to be going through the story in a lot of detail here, so major spoiler warning. Moving on, we come to the first chapter of the game, which is Scaling an Abandoned City. I don't really have a whole lot to point out here, except for the chapter's conclusion, in which we reach a monument that is dedicated to those who have died trying to climb the mountain. Again, I don't really want to read into this too much, but to me, it's the developer's way of paying respect to those who have unfortunately succumbed to their struggles with mental illness. Madeline discovers the statue and comments that this journey may have been a mistake, a clear indication of self-doubt and unsureness that plagues the mindset of those living with anxiety and depression. In Chapter 2, Madeline continues her ascent up the mountain, in what may be a sequence taking place in her dreams. Eventually, she reaches a mirror in the level, and it shatters, and a part of her escapes, a part of her that is colder and more distant, as is reflected in the cooler colors that make up this new being, a clear distinction from the warm colors that comprise Madeline Sprite. For now, this being scatters away, but after some tougher platform challenges, we encounter her and speak for the first time. As we encounter this other Madeline, the music drastically changes, from upbeat and pushing you forward, to somber and ghostly. which is representative of the moment depression or an anxiety-induced panic attack takes over. The two start to talk as the colder version begins objecting to the real Madeline's goal of climbing the mountain, trying to instill more doubt in her mind. Again, this sense of self-doubt is a staple of the depressed mind. The depression almost convinces you in a way that you can't do something, and it disguises its reasoning in a logical manner. But the reality is that to simply give up is more detrimental than trying and failing. 
Failure is a lesson and it makes us stronger. It's the only way to grow and I think that's a goal everyone should have in their lives, to grow. By the way, I'm going to refer to these two as Cold Madeline and Warm Madeline when talking about them when they're on screen together, just to avoid confusion. Warm Madeline is our hero from the beginning, while Cold Madeline is the one that breaks free from the mirror. As the conversation ends between these two, Cold Madeline begins to follow the movement of her warmer counterpart. If the player stands still for too long, Cold Madeline will catch up and her touch will instantly kill Warm Madeline, kind of similar to the Shadow Mario mechanic in some of the Mario games. The player continues to overcome this by advancing through each stage and not succumbing to the self-doubt presented by Cold Madeline's presence and repeated failures in difficult platforming levels. After overcoming some more levels, Cold Madeline disappears and our hero encounters a phone booth in the middle of nowhere. Here we get a little bit of background about Madeline's life as she contacts what is most likely an old boyfriend who apparently was never very helpful to her when she experienced panic attacks. He ends the call by revealing that this is a dream because he hasn't talked to her in months in the real world. It shows that Madeline's mind is still hung up on that failed relationship, which explains its appearance in her dreams. Failed relationships of the past can haunt all of us, but the negative emotions felt during that are only amplified by depressive disorders. Awaking from the dream, Madeline encounters a new friend named Theo, but more on their dynamics later. The chapter ends with Madeline encountering the real payphone and calling her mother who calms her daughter down after they discuss her history of panic attacks. Panic attacks are often felt by those suffering from anxiety disorders and they result in a person feeling completely overwhelmed and unable to contain their stress. A person suffering from a panic attack can become immobile or experience severe shaking because of the amount of fear that their minds are encountering, and they may even feel like they are unable to breathe. Panic attacks can be triggered by environmental stimulus, nervousness for an upcoming event, and honestly, they can sometimes occur for no clear reason. Panic attacks can happen to anyone, but those with depressive or anxiety-based disorders are more likely to experience them. Moving on, we come to chapter 3, which is all about how Madeline's mindset interacts with someone else who is living with a depressive disorder. Meet Mr. Oshiro, a hotel owner. Mr. Oshiro's hotel has failed, but running that business was his greatest passion in life, and he has never been able to move on past it. It's pretty evident from his self-loathing words that Oshiro is also living with some sort of depression-based disorder. Oshiro can't stop himself from thinking negative thoughts, to the point that sometimes they consume him and even manifest as red and black spheres that will instantly kill the player if touched during the platform sections. It demonstrates how sometimes people can get so caught up because of depression that they seem to lose control of their thoughts and their actions, and it can lead to negative reactions from friends and consequences down the road. After helping Oshiro clean up the hotel, Madeline is frustrated with his insistence on her staying at the hotel. She simply wants to continue climbing the mountain. This irritability that can be brought on from depression seizes control, and once again, Madeline's troubled mind takes on a physical form. Cold Madeline returns and belittles Oshiro, mocking him for his failed business and calling him a loser. It's Madeline succumbing to the same mindset that Oshiro had. She loses control of herself because of her depression and spews out hateful comments that she doesn't really believe. It leads to a divide between Oshiro and her, and eventually the hotel manager snaps and attempts to attack her. After some more platforming sections, Oshiro calms down and simply asks Madeline to leave and to never speak with him. Their almost friendship is dismantled simply because depression took control of both of their minds and they weren't yet strong enough to resist. Chapter 4 sees Madeline continuing her climb up the mountain. After traversing some very dangerous cliffs while navigating some high speed winds, she reaches a lift to take her up to the next section of the mountain. Theo arrives and accompanies her up the cliff, and halfway through, the cart suddenly stops, and Madeline begins to have a panic attack. She immediately loses control of her thoughts and thinks that the duo are doomed. But Theo has a plan to help, as he has become a friend to our hero, and tells Madeline of a breathing technique that his grandfather taught him. 
he tells her to close her eyes and picture a feather that she needs to keep floating. The only way to do this is by breathing deep and exhaling slowly to keep the feather in midair while she draws a new deep breath. It's a breathing strategy that is taught in various ways throughout the world to those struggling with panic attacks. Taking deep, slow breaths will slow down your heart rate and can eliminate the rush you feel from all the adrenaline being released in your body. It gets more oxygen to the brain which helps you process things in a calm manner instead of a panicked one. And while playing, I found myself actually breathing deep while completing this section, as if I were Madeline. And honestly, it's a strategy I've used myself to calm down in any situation that has me feeling nervous. Madeline's eventual level-headedness is rewarded, and the lift reactivates, completing its movement higher up the mountain, and our duo is saved. We finally reach the Mirror Temple in Chapter 5, and honestly, this is where the game turns the difficulty up to kick in the nuts levels. My god, I felt the difficulty curve was insane, but perhaps this is a representation for how hard it can be to get out of a depressive mood once you get farther and farther into one. Or maybe it's just hard, I don't know. <laughs> The chapter begins with Theo running into the temple for a selfie, only to go missing, and Madeline begins her search for him. She discovers a giant mirror in the middle of the temple, and as she unveils it, she is sucked into a mirror dimension that represents the inner workings of her troubled mind. The purple and red colors of this new environment pop out and bring visions of uneasiness to the mind, especially these red mini tentacles that are all over many surfaces. This represents Madeline's troubled mind. It's a mess and harbors many horrifying manifestations of her thoughts. Cold Madeline greets her and explains that this nightmare zone is inside of her head and they continue to argue in a cyclical manner. Indecisiveness tends to be another common ailment of those struggling with anxiety and depression as decision making is an act that is meant to be done with confidence and these two mental illnesses can rob people of that. As Madeline progresses, she encounters demon monsters that actively try to kill her. After discovering another mirror, Madeline takes a moment to ponder and asks, If this is all in my head, why is it so hostile? Which is a powerful question. Depression can eat you alive from the inside out, stripping you of your humanity and your well-being. It doesn't care if you're happy, rich, famous, or whatever, it will attempt to destroy your mind from inside of your thoughts. Madeline begins to wonder if she should just give in to this nightmare world in hopes that Theo will be saved from it. But during a moment of quiet resolve, she decides that this won't be her fate. She summons the will to go on, and the journey continues. Eventually, Madeline finds Theo and wills them to victory in overcoming the horrors locked within her mind. This brings us to what I believe is the most powerful chapter of the game, Chapter 6, Reflection. Reflection starts with a full 15-minute conversation between Madeline and Theo in which they truly bond by discussing their past and the demons that haunt them, and it ultimately culminates with Madeline sharing what living with anxiety and depression truly feels like. We get a powerfully human definition for what these two illnesses can do to a person, which is a very impactful moment as it sheds away the sterile medical terminology that so often is used to describe these conditions. <laughs> It demonstrates our humanity and how even something as powerful as the mind can be corrupted by thoughts and chemical imbalances. This 15 minute dialogue is worth the price of admission alone, and I highly recommend engaging with all the speaking points while playing this chapter. Trust me, it's good for the soul to experience this conversation, and honestly, you're gonna need a break after the difficulty of chapter 5 and what's to come in chapter 6. 
The conversation with Theo unlocks a sense of comfort within Madeline, as she feels better after sharing her thoughts and coping in a way that is much healthier than her normal strategy, which is drinking alcohol. It's here that we see Madeline is hoping that by climbing the mountain, she will overcome her depression and anxiety and find herself once again. But she's about to learn the most important lesson of living with depression, anxiety, or both. Madeline attempts to confront the cold, irritable version of herself, telling her that when she reaches the mountain summit, she will leave that part of her behind. Cold Madeline lashes out in a way we haven't seen before as she literally climbs out of her text box yelling toxic, self-loathing comments at her reflection. Madeline in her lowest point succumbs to the hateful words of her colder self and falls back down to the base of the mountain, a clear representation of when depression wins a battle over us. She tried to leave part of herself behind, but in reality, that is not possible. We always carry our own joys and our own sorrows. As she begins finding her way out of the cavern, Madeline makes a decision to not give up and to press onward and to believe in herself. This sense of confidence is perhaps one of the only ways to live a truly happy life while suffering from these conditions. The fortitude to go on comes from within. It's a belief in yourself that you can win. And we see this take place in the game as Madeline fights back against the depression within her by running full force at it. And as she chases the darkness, it recedes back, unable to control her anymore. She finally reaches the core of her troubled mind, Cold Madeline. Feeling defeated, Cold Madeline claims she will go away forever. But after her reflections, Warm Madeline realizes that this won't suffice. They must work together and find peace within themselves in order to climb the mountain. In the ultimate moment of self-love, the two versions of Madeline come together, finally at peace, as our hero learns that important lesson that I alluded to earlier. That being that you cannot rid yourself of these illnesses, but instead you must learn to accept them as part of who you are, but not to let them define you in any given moment. Never lose your agency. This coming together and finding peace within herself is married beautifully into the mechanics of the game, as now Madeline can dash twice before needing to land to recharge. One thing that Celeste does so elegantly is finding ways to make worthwhile game mechanics out of the themes presented in the story, and I absolutely love this game for that. With a newfound confidence about her, Madeline tells her friends that she will finish the climb and through a series of very tough platforming challenges, she reaches the peak of Celeste Mountain. The two versions of Madeline chat here. The colder version shares her concern that once they leave the mountain, she won't have a physical form anymore and will have to rely on warm Madeline to listen to her. They both agree to work together and to not let themselves be consumed by the negativity that defined their life before the events of the game. The two end the story of the main game by combining together and admiring the view from atop of Celeste Mountain. Madeline has been reborn. She has experienced a full range of emotions by truly looking deep within herself as she climbed the mountain. She gained an appreciation for herself and those around her and now has the confidence going forward to meet any obstacle. It's a very encouraging message to those living with any kind of mental illness, especially those dealing with depression and anxiety. Find peace within yourself and do not let your circumstances and environments define who you are. Have the confidence going forward to overcome all of these negative self-defeating symptoms as giving into them will do you no good. You are not hopeless, you just need self-discovery. Anyone can do it, even a seemingly normal, red-haired, pixelated young woman. Well guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. Making this video has been quite a journey, and it took longer than I wanted to, but you know what, that's okay. 
Madeline's story is a very touching one that demands to be experienced if you or someone you love is suffering from an anxiety or depression based disorder. Even if you can't play video games, the game's wonderful assist mode will carry you through in order to experience the powerful story. Mental illness is a very important topic that demands a certain level of respect and I hope I've reached that point. If you are suffering from any sort of mental illness, please know that you are not alone and that you can find peace within yourself if you're willing to face your demons alongside of those who love and care about you. In the description below, I have left links to both the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, a website you can use to find help, as well as the Suicide Prevention Hotline website. Please don't give up on yourself. You can overcome this. Thank you so much for watching. Be strong.